Hey there, and welcome to another SV Jader tutorial. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be learning about how to create a convincing bounce animation. And uh, you might be thinking a bounce animation is pretty basic, right? It's just kind of squash, stretch, a little bit of positioning, some timing, some motion. Uh, and you would be correct, and yet at the same time, it can be quite challenging to make a convincing bounce animation. And so today we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you some of the techniques and methods that I use and uh, some of the science behind how to use the easing graph in SVJator um, effectively. So uh, I hope you'll join me and I hope you'll enjoy this uh, lesson. Cool. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so as we dive into our scene here, yours might not look anything like mine. You might not have any of these beach elements or even this beach ball. And that is totally all right. All you need is a sphere or a circle shape um, to, to start off with for this uh, demonstration. I'm going to use the beach ball because eventually I'm going to add some rotation to it. And I want to, uh, to keep these stripes so you can see how the ball rotates. But all you need is a circle shape um, to animate, to do this first animation. And so what we're going to do before I forget and before yeah, you forget, because this could mess you up later on, is you want to make sure that your origin source is down at the bottom of your circle. And for me, and my beach ball. And why do I do that? Well, because this is going to be the plane, this is going to be the ground plane where the ball is going to bounce from or impact. And so I want my origin source, I'm going to squash and stretch my ball some. And when I do that, I want it the origin source to be at the bottom because that is where it's striking the ground. If my origin source were in the middle, let's say, and I started to squash and stretch it, it's going to squash and stretch towards the middle and that's going to lift it off the ground plane and that's going to be problematic. So before you really start animating, go ahead and put that origin source at the bottom there. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to lift our object into the air and we're going to just have a one second looping animation where our ball is going to fall, hit the ground, squash, and then bounce back up. And then it's just gonna repeat that motion. And so, yeah, pretty straightforward, but uh, you'll see there's um, some easing that's really going to make this effective. So to start, let's go ahead and add a position and a scale keyframe right at the beginning. And then we're going to go right to this mark right before the halfway mark right here. And we're going to add two more keyframes. Then I'm going to bring the ball down to where it strikes the ground right there. And here I'm going to stretch the ball up, and bring it up like that. So one thing to keep in mind that um, is one of the challenges of this squash and stretch is that you can manipulate the shape of the object, but the volume should always stay the same. So the air inside the ball is the same as it's getting stretched. So what that means is I want to make sure that the volume of the ball stays about the same. So as I'm stretching it up, as it's getting longer vertically, it's also getting more narrow width wise and vice versa. If I squash it down, it's getting wider uh, as it shortens vertically but I want to keep relatively about the same volume. So you can recognize it's still the same ball, it's just getting squashed or stretched. So let's go back. So it's stretching, so let's see, does it... Yeah, so why am I stretching? Well, as it's falling, gravity is pulling it towards the ground, so it's stretching out, collides with the ground, and so we're gonna scoot forward here on our timeline, right to the halfway mark, add two more keyframes, and right here I'm gonna squash it down. Again, trying to keep that volume about the same. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna scrub forward again to right about, let's say around here. And I am going to use this, um, this scale where I stretched it. We're gonna copy that one and paste it again because it's going to bounce back up. So it's kind of squashing down and then it's springing up and this energy that it's springing up with is what's going to carry it up. And then we'll, we'll move forward here 
Let's go ahead and copy these two. So I'll copy Command C, Command V, or Control C, Control V, and again, Command C, Command V. And so I want it to rise back to its original position, and I want it to also be the same scale as it started. So let's see. Let's go ahead and play it. Okay, so we have a start there. It's not great, but it's okay. And as you can see, as it strikes the ground, it's squashing, and then it's bouncing back up, and then it's returning to its original position. So again, not great. So what can we do? Well, this is where easing comes in handy. And so I'm gonna select these two keyframes, and we are going to do an ease in. So ease in cubic is what we're gonna do. All right, so we wanna do something like this. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't understand the ease graph for the longest time, and just recently tried to figure it out because I was like, I, rel I, I know how to make something work eventually by just experimenting, but it doesn't really make sense to me. So I wanted to try and understand it better. And so I'm no mathematician or scientist, <laughs> and there's some real math involved with this, but the best way that I have understood this as here is our graph here, and here is our, f our first keyframe. And then this is the next keyframe in the line to the right as it moves down the timeline. So it's only ever affecting the motion that happens moving towards the right or moving down your timeline from this keyframe to the next keyframe. This moving up this way in our graph vertical line is the animation percentage. So how much of the animation is complete moving to the right is time. And so if my, so the way I best understand it and the main way that it's made the most sense to me is if the start, if my, um, if my line, and this is our linear motion right here, this represents linear straight motion. So with easing, I will arrive at this keyframe at the same time. It is just the motion that happens in between that is changed. And so if my my line comes up this way, if I start off vertical, that is going to start off faster and end slower. However, if I start moving and my line moves to the right and then comes up this way, it's going to start off slower and then finish faster. So to the right is slower, going up is faster. What do I mean? Okay. So I want my animation to start off slow, and then as it falls, it gets faster. And so with this ease in cubic, it's going to, again, start slow, and then as it rises up here, it's going to finish faster. So let's watch. There we go. Did you see that little catch in the beginning? And then it falls, and then it hits. So again, I want to add some more easing here. And for these ones, we're just going to go ahead and add an ease out. All right, and then for this one, we are going to do another ease out. Let's see how this works. All right, so ease out, ease out, and then this one right here, we want to do an ease, actually need to be ease out court. All right, and then this one, you can just leave that as linear. So let's see how that goes. So we play this again. Ah, there you see it. That easing makes a huge difference. So see as the ball, it falls, hits, and there's that squashing motion, and then it bounces back up. And it looks like our ball has so much more energy and personality now. So that's really nice. And it's just fun to watch. Very cool. So give yourself a pat on the back. We've finished round one and we're gonna dive into something a little bit more complex now.